Do you ever find meal planning a total drag? Well, you're not alone. Occasionally I find meal planning a drag too, and we get this common question about how do I meal prep on busy weeks from our clients just about every day in our office. I'm Andrea Hallwagner, Registered Dietitian and Practice Director at Health Stand Nutrition. And today I'm diving into healthy meal planning in three easy steps. I'm gonna break it all down and see what I can do to make your family meal planning a little less complicated and a little less stressful. Um, I wanna start off by saying this is a process that's taken us, oh goodness, um, 18 years we've been running Health Stand Nutrition here and uh, the dietitians on the team here, we've spent a lot of time trying to navigate how do we best teach meal planning and how do we best get people feeling less overwhelmed by the daunting task of keeping everybody happy and healthy um, when you've got busy family commitments and busy work commitments at the same time. So we're going to draw on some of, of course, my experience as a mom dietitian navigating this uh, both on a personal level and in uh, my career as a dietitian. And then I'm going to pull in a little bit of insight um, from all the different types of dietitians uh, on our team here, ranging from people that cook for one, all the way up to people that are cooking for small kids. Um, we've got a dietitian on our team um, that just recently retired that was of course cooking for a lifetime of family members uh, all the way up into university age. So all different types of phases require meal planning in a little bit of a different way. But what I wanna do is really kind of distill down, I think the things that are universal to all of us, no matter who you are, how busy you are and what life phase you're in and see what we can do to help break this complexities down and make things a little bit easier. So if you're joining me live, fantastic. A shout out to you. If you're joining me um, later on at uh, watching this video later, that's great too. Still love to hear from you in the comments about maybe what you found most helpful or if you've got a meal planning question, by all means, please take a look at uh, leaving that in the comments and I'd be happy to uh, respond personally to your meal planning questions. And um, let's get things rolling here. So first of all, when we navigate the topic of healthy meal planning, um, I wanna just quickly run through the challenges. And if one of these actually looks like a common challenge for you um, that you're experiencing, let me know in the comments which are the ones that cause you the most stress. We hear from people that uh, putting together some sort of a healthy meal that's going to be tasty, that the family will actually eat <laughs> is the biggest challenge. So maybe your idea is something, but your family, you maybe you got some picky eaters or a picky spouse at home that makes that a little challenging. Um, second thing that comes up is of course, confliction about like, what should you eat? Um, oftentimes we address a ton of questions around fads and myths and is this good or is this bad? Am I allowed to eat carbs or are carbs out? Um, Plant-based, meditarians, all these types of things come up um, as a challenge when people are trying to figure out well, what is the best diet to follow. Um, and to answer that very, very simply, there are many ways that you can achieve good health. Third challenge that comes up is that the struggle between um, juggling things at home and at work can be a big one in terms of finding the time to either plan and prep food or even shop for food comes up. It's not even getting to the point of actually um, cooking the meal. We're talking about the having groceries in the house to even have the time to, uh, to get there is a challenge for many of our clients. Um, the other thing that comes up is we can all have a good plan in mind but then life isn't always predictable. And of course, things are going to go sideways on us where the, sometimes the best plan that we've got in motion just isn't going to happen because your schedule changes or um, something just happened unexpectedly. So that becomes a bit of a challenge. You also might find uh, you wanna make healthy dinners and you're motivated at the beginning of the day, but throughout the day, your energy and motivation slides and you get home from work or from your day in a state that I like to call hangry. And of course, that's the mix between feeling angry and sleepy at the same time and so um, overwhelmed and sort of stressed out and you're just too hungry. And at that point, you just don't care. You're just going to grab whatever. 
So let me know if any of these resonate with you as a, a common one in your household. And of course, um, if you get home from school or work in this hangry state, uh, it becomes difficult to even want to make healthy choices there as well. So those are our challenges, not easy ones to navigate, but I think we've got some practical ideas to make sure that we can get things uh, moving in the right direction. So first of all, you might think, okay, Andrea, I'm not a meal planner. I'm not even sure I want to meal plan. Like what are truly the big benefits? Well, there's five benefits. There's probably even more, um, but I'm gonna give you my five. First of all, it helps your budget so that you're not you know, um, spending more on a whole bunch of foods. And then also, of course, uh, tossing out foods, which brings me to my second one. It's going to reduce some food waste in your house. There's nothing worse than buying a beautiful fridge full of fresh vegetables and fruit only to find that you're tossing out a whole bunch because you just didn't get the whole, how do I use it in the right order um, figured out before things go bad. Um, of course, thirdly, it's going to protect your health. We know people that plan some of their meals and you don't have to be a rock star here. Just a little bit of planning can go a long way to really help you out. We know it's just going to help your health out. We know fourth, it's going to eliminate mealtime stress. So maybe if you're not motivated by the health angle or the budget angle, none of us want to come home at the end of a work day feeling totally overwhelmed and now have to use our creative juices to try and figure out what to make. Um, and number five, it's going to just cut down the amount of time you spend thinking and worrying about what is for dinner tonight. Um, so those are my five. Maybe you've got some more. If you've got some other benefits of why you think meal planning might be important, um, let me know in the comments because um, I'm sure there's some more. So let's dive into my three steps. So I want to give you three steps in healthy meal planning. So step number one, and even before I get into my steps, in the information I've included on the side of the video here, if you want to download a bit of an overview of some of the key steps and information I'm going through today there, I've got it all written down for you. Um, so click over to the link and you can read and follow along or of course print that off if this helps to inspire you to take action. Um, and at the end of that, you're also going to see um, I'm providing access to our supper um, ebook. So if you're looking for more support on supper, I've got more good free stuff for you. Um, and you can certainly download that extra ebook there as well. So the three steps. This is the drum roll. <laughs> step number one, book it. Step number two is map it. And step number three is save it. So I want to dive into what each one of those actually looks like. Um, step number one, book it means I need you to think about being as strategic about booking in a regular grocery shopping date into your calendar, into your day timer with as much importance as what um, you might do if you had a family member's birthday. And what I find when we ask our clients about how do you navigate grocery shopping, um, very few people have it booked into their calendar. Um, and if you're finding that you're going through phases um, within your week where sometimes you have groceries in the house and sometimes you don't, then I'm going to say you need to get a bit more intentional about putting it on the calendar. Because when we put stuff on the calendar with significant importance, um, stuff happens and things get done. When it's not in there, chances are it's a last minute quick grab of, oh my gosh, we're out of food, there's nothing in the house to pull together a fast meal. So if you take nothing from today, if you take one small element of planning, um, usually all meal planning needs to start with making sure there's good ingredients in the house to even have a hope for meal planning. So I'm going to say this might sound super small and super obvious, but if you haven't got it into your calendar, I'm going to nudge you to, uh, to take that step. Um, so booking it. Um, and if you don't have any time to shop, the other way you can do it is, of course, there's tons of different grocery delivery systems. Um, and you might book that into your calendar instead of actually going to the store. Book it over your lunch hour at work and say, OK, on Tuesdays at lunch, I'm going to arrange my um, online grocery shopping and literally pick it up on my way home or have it delivered right to my door. There's both of those options available. But again, what we actually um, have in our calendar is really going to be the stuff that is going to make, um, make things work. So get it in the calendar, which are, regardless of which one that you uh, decide to go with. So that's number one. Step number one is book it. Book some time for the planning of uh, getting food in the house. Step number two, map it. Okay, super simple strategy here. 
Um, some people use a 30 day calendar that works great. Some people use their day timer. Um, some people use an app of some sort for all sorts of fancy meal planning prep kind of systems. I'm going to suggest if you're finding meal planning super overwhelming, I'm going to suggest you stick with pen and paper and make it super simple. I'm always into the, like, how do we make this as easy as possible? So you're actually going to use it. Um, so a calendar works just fine. A seven day or a 30 day at once, get some sort of physical thing in front of you um, that allows you to then take your week ahead and really bank off what kind of meal am I going to actually need? So I've listed on, uh, I'm gonna run through the different types here on our video, but of course I'm also providing that information if you wanna um, hop on over to the website link that I've provided in the notes there where you can download all this so you've got it right in front of you. But there's a few different ways that you want to think about um, sort of labeling the type of meal that you want because what I'm finding is when people don't do this, um, people will come up with these very elaborate meal planning things, but they're destined for failure right out of the gates because of course maybe they forgot that they had a meeting that night and some sort of long chopping, prepping, cooking time thing that they put on their plan isn't actually going to work. So we really need to be intentional about the type of meal that you're thinking about needs to match what your schedule is going to actually um, dictate. And again, this sounds super obvious. Very few people think about their schedule first before they think about what they're gonna have for dinner. So oftentimes people will come up with a meal plan and then try and figure out how it's going to fit into their schedule. So we want to do it in the right order. So here's the, the sort of the labels on how you can think about meal planning. Number one, fast and fresh. These are things that can be made in like 10, 20, or 30 minutes maximum. These are your weekday sort of quick, fast, fresh types of prep where you can come home and assemble things fairly quickly. These are things in our house like making a black bean quesadilla or breakfast for supper theme like pancakes and scrambled eggs with a fresh fruit salad. Um, so super, super fast and furious, what you can do in 30 minutes or less. Second label is what I call a slow meal. And a slow meal is of course something fresh you might want to do, but it's going to take a little longer. Maybe it's going to take you about an hour. So I like to think of these things as maybe something I might be doing on Sunday night um, for Sunday family uh, night dinner. They're going to take a little bit more prep, some cooking, some marinating, some um, longer cooking time. So again, for a lot of busy families, we, we need to just be cognizant on super busy weekday nights. Are these kind of meals going to really work or is there going to be a better day for them? Third type of label you can use is what I call big batch. These are fresh meals that are made in a large volume that you're intentionally going to cook extra of to pop into the freezer or maybe use as leftovers the next day. So things that work really well for that type of a big batch theme tend to be things like chilies and meat sauces and soups and those types of things. And again, if you're struggling with meal prep, keep in mind it doesn't take you double the amount of time to make a double batch of chili today. Um, it probably takes you about the same amount of time, maybe tiny little extra to chop an extra onion or something. But um, super, super helpful because then you get two meals for literally the time cost of making one meal. So that can be a good one. Um, fourth option is what I call a repurposed meal. And a repurposed meal is an interesting one where we think about cooking once and then eating it twice. Um, this might be what you'd consider leftovers, but it might not be. Um, I'm a foodie and I don't love leftovers. So I tend to like to cook a repurposed meal where there's going to be one ingredient, one planned extra component that I'm using today that is going to go into tomorrow night's meal, which can save a little bit of time. So for example, last night at our house, we had some chicken, we had some a uh, couple different types of veggies, and then we had rice. In our fridge, we have extra rice, um, and we intentionally cooked double what we needed because tonight, I'm actually gonna be making a beef stir fry with different veggies, but the rice part, it's already done. So I don't even have to cook that, we're just gonna heat it up, and it's gonna go with the quick weekday meal of the stir fry that we're doing tonight. So that's what I'd consider a planned extra, or a repurposed meal, where one part is going into something um, for the next day. So a super good time-saving kind of tip is the repurposed meal. 
And of course, the last part, um, the last label out of these fives is just an eating out type of meal. Maybe this is going to be literally a time when you're at a family member's house or you're going to be grabbing something um, quickly. But again, if you get that into the schedule, then it just sort of eases your mind where your mind doesn't have to be constantly thinking about um, what am I having for dinner today? You're super intentional about when you're eating out and when you're at home, which is always good instead of leaving things on the fly um, to our latest and greatest cravings for what we might be thinking about on our way home from work. So those labels again, fast and fresh, slow, big batch, repurposed, or out. So if you're thinking about mapping out in step two here what your meal planning scenario is going to look like, literally you're going to look at your schedule and you might only do this one day ahead you might do it two or three days ahead. And if you're a super total meal plan geek, you might do seven days at a time. Um, and just going to label each of those days, what type of meal are we looking for? This is a really, really great, um, easy way to think about meal planning. And then you can go ahead and think about, okay, well, what is it actually going to be? Um, but I want you to give it a label first that matches your schedule, that's the key. And by the way, back to this debate about like how many days should I do at once? I see these meal plan sites that have all these crazy like plan 30 days at once or meal prep on Sunday all day um, and put together all your meals for the week. This is awesome if it works for you. I need very few people that this works. And it certainly doesn't work for me because I'm not that organized to want to plan seven days at once. And I certainly don't want to spend all day on Sunday cooking meals. So if you're like me and like most of the clients that we see in our practice, um, you might do better off simply planning one day ahead. But again, use the format that we're talking about in the three steps here. Um, and it really does take some of the chaos and the overwhelm away. Um, just simply getting a few things down on paper. Okay, step number three. Um, you want to save it. Whatever you are mapping out, any kind of a menu plan that you are doing, I want you to hang on to this because I'm almost going to guarantee that some of this stuff you could reuse again, especially on a particularly busy week. So save everything that you're working on because you never know when you'll just want to flip through um, you know, four weeks ago on what you did and literally pull it out and say, great, we're just doing this this week because the schedule's the same. These are ingredients we like, easy, and you're going to just roll with it. So you can use it as a bank of uh, ideas. Once you get, a, I would say, two, three, or four weeks done of these things, oftentimes we can just quickly pull in information to make meal planning even that much more simple. Um, so in step number three, when I'm saying save it, so save your ideas um, for menus, but also I want you to save a reusable grocery shopping list. So there is a little small time investment to get this thing done right only once, but then you've got it for life. And so if you're a paper person, like my husband and I and our family, we have a paper grocery store, grocery shopping list. Um, it lives on our fridge at all times for people to add to, scratch things off, circle. Um, we've navigated this thing, literally going to be looking at sort of the key parts of each of the grocery store aisles. We've done it once. And once it's done once, you can literally photocopy this thing and reuse it again and again. And why this is so great is that um, you don't come home with like 10 cans of baked beans <laughs> when you already had 10 cans of baked beans in the, in the, uh, the cupboard, only to find out it was actually kidney beans you needed for making that big batch of chili that you wanted to find out you have none of those. And so it's a really great way before you shop to be able to take inventory on what you got and navigate the grocery store super, super quickly. So I promise if you get this thing done once, it's a huge game changer in uh, grocery shopping for life. Now, for those of you that are not a paper person, there are tons of fantastic grocery store apps that uh, some of them sync across family members' phones and iPads to, um, to your smartphones. There's all sorts of great, fantastic resources uh, you can use for grocery shopping apps. Um, and again, once you build an overall good plan once, you can go and then reuse a lot of that legwork you set up um, at the very beginning. So couple of thoughts there, but again, I'm gonna suggest most people do better with paper, just saying. <laughs> I think we spend so much time on computers that oftentimes, um, sometimes just going back to the pen and paper can work really, really well. 
So that's the save it component of saving any of those menus and meals um, that you come up with and saving a reusable staple foods grocery store uh, list is fantastic. Put all of those in a binder if you've got one, um, a folder on your computer, organize it in an app, whatever it keeps you organized, but put it all in one place. That's the key when we're talking about meal planning. So those are my three steps um, and a couple of other sort of thoughts when we look at, well, how do I even think about meal planning as a whole? Um, what, what do I actually put in these meals and menus that I'm mapping out for the week? Again, I like to keep it super simple. One of the things we teach all of our clients is that balanced meal has three things in it, a grain or a starch, a fruit or a veggie, maybe even both. Um, and thirdly, some sort of source of protein. And um, if you really navigate meal planning from that three easy steps, um, getting some component from each of those three categories in there, it's not as overwhelming as it may seem. And what's really great about this when we work with families in our office is when we get kids coming up with ideas, it's hilarious what they come up with. They might be coming up with meal planning for um, supper that has pancakes with peas, because that's maybe one of their favorite veggies carrot sticks and I don't know, maybe they come up with having poached eggs and it sort of goes, the pancakes egg theme sort of goes, but do we really care if the carrots and peas actually went? Probably not, it's a balanced meal and it's what worked for supper on a quick, fast and furious meal for that evening. So you don't have to be a gourmet chef to get meal planning right. Um, really just look at what do I have in the house to navigate those three components and if we start there, life is good you can always get fancier later but start super simple and then as uh, you've got a little bit more time and organization you can mix it up and get way more complex in the types of foods and menus and, and recipes um, that you're making or if you don't really like cooking that much you might just keep it as simple and that is totally okay too there's plenty of ways you can eat healthy okay so last thing i want to talk a little bit about here um, as an extra sort of tip that I included in the website link there that I've included on the video is um, I want to talk about the value of what I call a backup supper plan. Super key because we all know that life is going to hand you challenges and as much as you can have a good plan in place for today, your schedule, your family members and whatever else might go totally sideways and your plan is no longer relevant. And so this is where we teach our clients in our office the concept of a backup um, supper plan. And so a backup supper plan really helps you to think about, okay, on my grocery shopping list, every single week when I'm going there, I wanna have a certain set of key ingredients that pull together, I would say three to five different supper um, menus that I can make at any time in less than 30 minutes. The key is less than 30 minutes as well. Um, and when we've got that regularly on our grocery shopping list and it's always in the house, we know that at any moment, regardless of what is happening, you can quickly pull together those three to five backup supper meals um, to get a good healthy meal on the table. This appeases and kind of manages the overall stress level of so many families. Um, so three to five meals is what we're looking for. Second sort of thing to think about when we're talking about a backup plan is we want them to of course be balanced. We wanna have those three things for balance, the grain or starch, second, some sort of vegetables, probably two if we can, even better, and third, some sort of a source of protein is what we're after. Um, we wanna get them on the, the weekly shopping list at all times, and here's the other kicker. You need to teach the main cook, well, if you are the main cook, you're probably watching this video, but you need to teach the not so great cooks in your home how to actually make these backup supper meals. Because we need to have all parties kind of on board that if like stuff happens and our plan is no longer gonna happen, that anyone, whoever gets home first, or even those that aren't the main cooks or the, the chefs of the house can quickly be able to pull those things together. Um, so I'm gonna say that not everyone has to be an amazing cook, but can you learn to do like three, four or five super easy things to help out your partner in crime at home? I would say that's a fair deal. And so again, just a little bit of instruction on how to do this stuff if you're the main cook of the house um, can really lighten the load for you so that you're not the only one involved in trying to get food on the table for the family. Big, big thing. 
So if you're looking for some ideas on what a backup meal might look like, I've listed eight of them for you in the website link associated with this video. So you can scroll over and see if any of those will work for you and feel free to just use them as is or take a look at the list and go, hmm, we would use this, but maybe not that and substitute and come up with something that you know is going to work for your household. So some of the super quick ones that we like to do in our house, um, we'll saute some shrimp, we'll throw some Thai chili sauce or maybe just fresh lemon and garlic and olive oil on there. We'll toss that over a pre-washed salad and we'll serve that with couscous. Couscous is ready in like, you boil water, turn the pot off and it's ready in like a minute. So that meal literally is a 15 minute or less type of meal that you can put together at any time. So super easy one to think about. Um, we also might do something like a um, pasta, I call it um, pasta tomato sauce. And instead of meat, because maybe we don't have meat thawed, maybe the ground beef or ground turkey, whatever we've got in the freezer is just going to take too long to do. Um, instead, we'll use a can of lentils or black beans. We'll make more of a vegetarian based um, tomato meat sauce um, as a quick one to toss onto the table. Serve it with a little Parmesan cheese on the top, um, maybe some carrot sticks or any kind of raw vegetables that are kicking around our fridge drawer and dinner again is on the table in pretty much as much time as it takes for the water to boil. So those are a couple of um, super fast backup meals that work for us. I'd love to know from you, what are your absolute favorite um, backup supper meals that can be made in less than 30 minutes, even like 15 minutes is even better because backup meals, we need some, something that is assembled super, super fast. So if you've got one that's working for you, let me know in the comments. Love to know what you're thinking. Uh, super fast ideas that maybe someone else watching this video um, could consider making for their household. So I am curious, what did I talk about today in this video that was helpful to you? Was there one thing that you can take from today's video and put into action immediately instead of thinking about it? Well, that was very nice, but then not taking any action. I want you to take some action with something that I talked about in this video. Maybe it's that you're going to make a reusable grocery shopping list and I put that on the calendar. When are you going to have it done by? Um, or maybe it is that you're literally going to think about creating these backup menus and make sure that they're on the grocery shopping list. Or maybe one of the tips that I talked about today, such as just getting grocery shopping built into your schedule as an automatic reoccurring appointment on your weekly calendar is the most important thing you need to take from today. Whatever it is, so curious to find out, let me know in the comments what's one thing that you found helpful about our chat today on this video. And uh, if you're looking for more healthy eating advice, hop on over to our website, healthstandnutrition.com. All sorts of goodies there. Um, and if you're looking for more advice, of course, I've got that supper ebook associated with the website link in the notes of this video. You can check that out for all sorts of great recipe ideas and more support on just everyday healthy supper planning. Um, and the team of dietitians here at HealthStand, we spend a heck of a lot of our time every day talking about healthy meal planning for busy families. So if you need some assistance, regardless if you're a gourmet cook or someone that absolutely despises cooking, I promise we've got some solutions for you. So come on over. Um, you can reach out and I'm happy to hop on a quick phone call with you and chat about what's going on and then fit you with the best dietitian on our team for your family's needs. So I'm Andrea Hallwager. Thank you for watching today on our Facebook live video on healthy meal planning. I look forward to joining you next week. I'm going to be talking about how do you choose a dietitian? The one that's right for you because different dietitians need or different people need different dietitians. So how do you make that choice and hire the right person for you? So I'll be back next Wednesday, 1230 Mountain Time, talking just about that. So bye for now. And thanks again for watching. I look forward to uh, seeing you over on our website and uh, learning from any questions you might have around meal planning in the comments. Take care.